Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I have part three of the Fragrance by Anniversary Haul sale video. Um, I know in my part two I mentioned that I was done and that was it really, but I did in the last few hours of that sale get two more fragrances, so this is that haul. Um, this video is gonna go up way after that sale took place, but I have a lot of other videos that are gonna go before and I just wanted to film this one so I could open these both up. And the main thing that spurred on this purchase was as you guys saw in part two, definitely check it out if you haven't already. I ran into that whole deal with Lune Feline and I just couldn't get Atelier des Arts out of my mind. So I purchased um, another one from the house and another fragrance actually, which is also my first from that house. So two blind buys, two first impressions, two new from the house, and it's gonna be an exciting haul. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified every time I put out a new video. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's always in the description box below. We have a lot of fun on there, scent of the day, little things on stories, so definitely make sure to follow. And let's get into it. So as I mentioned, both of these are firsts from the house, and both of these are blind buys. I did my best with Atelier des Arts to get the one I actually sampled, Lune Feline, but with that whole ordeal that took place, I decided to just get my number two from the house. So we'll get to that one, we'll leave that one for a second. But the first one is another risky purchase for me, if only because it's a perfume oil and I usually stay away, but this is Arbo Wardat from Rosasi, and I've always been curious about their fragrances, especially because of the intricate bottles and it's a Middle Eastern house based out of Dubai and I've just wanted to try them. But I'm really not into perfume oils for the most part. I really like the spray, but this one, after reading it, an Arbo Wardot means either for flowers or for roses and the notes are completely within my love zone. Um, it's bergamot, jasmine, rose, musk, sandalwood, and amber, and those are all notes I absolutely love. I read good things, and I just, it was inexpensive, I decided to bite the bullet. So, I got the 30 mil, and it's a really, I'm not usually one to be swayed by bottles, but both of these are ones where the bottle really is nice. Um, and yeah, this is what it looks like. It's incredibly heavy, um, it doesn't just, I know it looks like it would just kind of feel like nothing, but it's actually quite heavy. Um, not as heavy as an Amouage, or probably as heavy as Atelier des Arts is gonna be, but I was worried that I'd get it and it just would feel quite inexpensive or cheap, and it doesn't feel like that, which is a good sign, and it's engraved in the bottom, made in Dubai, so here's what it looks like, and then I figure it's gonna have like a stick or something, yeah. So here it is, I'm gonna put some on my arm here and we will discover it together. Ooh, it's strong. Wow. I really like this. It kind of has a um, an element of, it smells as if you had sprayed or rolled on perfume oils like rose and jasmine, like really, really high quality ones, but on top of a soft, um, like men's cologne, it's it's interesting. I'm trying to get those. It's a slightly citrusy opening, and maybe that's it. It just smells like a fresh, almost soapy men's cologne. Like a one part of that, and then two, three parts of really, really beautiful feminine florals. I really like it. It's. It's strong, definitely, and I'm interested to see how long this lasts because I've had perfume oils from the Middle East before and they've lasted days, like through showers, almost to a fault, honestly. It's been a little too much. But this one, it's definitely smelling strong, but I'm interested to see how long it actually lasts. And I'm very pleased to say that it's not a heady floral because I've also had ones where it's so it's kind of like flower bomb, but in an oil, extremely strong and incredibly heady to the point where someone like me who loves florals has, has just been totally turned off and it took me ages to go through. But 
This, at least upon first impressions, is not that. It's definitely a strong floral with a little bit of citrus in, at the start, but yeah, I really do like it. I'll definitely be wearing it, and again, in the second impressions, I'll know more about you know, the lasting power and all that, but until now, and I haven't tried very many perfume oils, but this has definitely been the best so far. So then we get to the second fragrance, and this one, as I mentioned, is from Atelier des Arts, and I really wanted it to be Lune Feline. Eventually, I will pick up Lune Feline because I still can't stop thinking about it, and it would have just been a perfect time because there was that sale and it was on sale even additionally to that. So we'll just wait and maybe it won't be for a couple of months because I would like to go on a no buy slash low buy, but we'll see. So I was just, this is the second time in my entire fragrance collection, I don't know, um, collecting period that I've ever been swayed by a bottle. The first and only time was actually uh, I think it was House of Oud, yes, that was House of Oud, and I was so, I like didn't even care if the scent was bad, I wanted a bottle from that collection. And this is how I felt for a very long time with Atelier des Arts, ever since like a year or so ago, whenever it was that uh, Fragrance with Amy started showing it on her channel, but I always knew that the notes just weren't my jam. I would, I would read all their fragrances and they all seemed very spicy and woody and dark and not safe enough for me to be blind buying and having you know, full 100 ml bottles of. So Lune Feline really surprised me and I couldn't get that out of my head. So because I couldn't get my number one choice, I decided to get my number two, which is Musk Immortel. And it seemed like the safest for me out of the others because of the notes. So it has grapefruit, clary sage, iris, patchouli, vetiver, cipral oil, and bread musk and email 10. So this is what it looks like, very, very beautiful packaging, which isn't always the case, even with niche expensive fragrances, I will say that. And this internal box, also very beautiful, very clean, and it has one of these pullouts, which I love, and wow, this looks so pretty. It really does match the beauty of what I've seen in videos. Incredibly heavy as well. This is what it looks like. Again, I got Masque Immortel by Atelier des Arts. And I first, when I first saw it, I thought maybe the gold is just a gimmick and the fragrance isn't all there or that the bottle is actually cheap, but it's just gold. And it's not, it's incredibly heavy glass. Let's see the lid. The lid is also incredibly weighted, which I love. And if it's anything like Lune Feline, the fragrance is high quality as well, and I loved that. Packaging wise, box, everything, it has been great so far. I don't know why I'm so nervous for this fragrance, because I've definitely bought niche fragrances blind all the time, even more expensive than this one. There's just something about, I was already so anxious, so we'll see. Okay, wow. It's, um, I'm getting like a tobacco, like a green, slightly green tobacco, or at least smoky scent. And the musk in this, it is definitely musky, but it's in no way like a clean musk or a laundry. It's very dark. It's incredibly dark, almost like a dirty musk and slightly animalic. Um, Definitely not feminine leading, unisex at, at best, but I feel like it's possible more men would like this than women. But I would say unisex scent. And based on first impressions, it's also, it smells much more niche than Lune Feline. And Lune Feline already, does, it doesn't smell just generic or like a designer fragrance by any means, but this, is quite interesting. It's much more artistic of a fragrance, if that makes any sense. And it's kind of, it's it smells a bit dusty as well. I'm wondering if that's the Martel, because I have heard as a flower, it's a flower, it's a floral, but I have heard it doesn't really smell like a quote unquote floral. It's, yeah, it's very interesting, this fragrance. 
I will say, upon first impressions, Luin Filin had a lot more of a immediate love reaction from me. That one within like the first one, first minute, really, I knew I liked and it just got more and more to the point that I'm still thinking about it. This one leaves a lot more up for imagination. I don't hate it, but I am intrigued to see if I'll start to like it more and if I feel differently by the second impressions. I hope I don't hate it. I'm also wondering how it would do with something like L'Autre Oud from Maison Givenchy, or Maison Lancôme, um, because that's like a darker, richer, kind of bitter oud, and this is kind of a darker, richer musk that honestly smells incredibly smoky to me. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to play around with that and see how I feel. I don't hate it, but it's definitely more of a risk like I knew it was going to be. Um, and I'll have to play around and see how I end up actually liking it and whether layering it helps me or um, how it kind of does once I've had full long like day tests with it. So as always, I like to put them in order. And I have to say, I'm really, really liking Arbor War Dot. I didn't think I would like it so much. I felt like this was gonna be the number two add-on to uh, Atelier des Arts, but it really isn't. I'm really liking it, it's quite strong. I'm definitely gonna have to come back and tell you guys how I actually feel about it because I don't experiment m very much with perfume oils, so I feel like I'll have more to say about whether it's actually lasting a long time, how I feel about the sillage. It's quite strong, but it's, j I don't know, it's kind of like a slightly, as I said, sh like a shampoo-y or barbershop-y, very slight, very slight, like barbershop-y men's cologne mixed with very feminine perfume oil. So it's an interesting one, but I'm liking it. In second place, or because there's two in last place, is actually the Musk Immortel. I don't hate it, but it does, it doesn't really smell, it smells so removed from being like a fragrance to me because it's such an, it's such an animalic, dusty musk mixed with kind of a bitter tobacco smoke. Not even like a sweet tobacco pipe smoke. It's quite bitter as well. And there's like a dusty quality to it. It's, it's hard to explain. It isn't a kind of fragrance I have at all in my collection, so that is the upside, is that it's incredibly unique to me. Um, but it is also 100 mil, and I'm not sure if I need personally 100 mil of this. So I will see how I feel, and I will come back in the second impressions as always, and let you guys know how it ends up working out for me. But if you have tried these two fragrances or any of from these houses actually, from Atelier des Arts or Saucy, definitely let me know in the comments below. I know a whole bunch of you have tried Lune Feline um, and you guys tend to like it as well, but let me know if you've tried any others from the house and definitely let me know if you've tried any from Rosassi because I am surprisingly really, really liking Arbo War Dot. So yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful day, that you've subscribed and that you follow me on Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye.